Hi there, this is Chris from Moto Legends, the chap in the cap, here today to talk to you about a lovely lightweight short boot from Daytona called the AC Dry GTX. Now before I get into the boots themselves, let me tell you a little bit about Daytona because they're a very special company and most people accept they just make the world's best motorcycle boots. The company was started in 1957, um, founded by two brothers, Helmut and Reinhard Frey, in a factory in Bavaria, date was 1957. You can go along to the factory today and you may well still find Helmut and Reinhardt on the shop floor. And I've been along to see Helmut operating one of the machines, pressing out rubber soles, whilst Reinhardt's at the other end of the factory, sweeping up bits off the floor to make sure things are running smoothly. These guys are old fashioned, traditional boot makers. They are not empire builders. They have no interest in becoming a motorcycle apparel maker. They don't want to make helmets. They don't want to make jackets. They don't want to make gloves. They don't want to make pants. Their aim was to make solely the world's best motorcycle boots. And there aren't many people around who would disagree with the assertion that they have succeeded in that aim. So this is the Arrow Sport. No, it's not, it's the AC Dry. I often get confused. So this is the AC Dry, it's GTX. Now, I remember when the importer phoned us up to tell us exciting news. There's been a big growth in trainers as a form of footwear for motorcyclists and Daytona are going to do a trainer boot. And we thought, that's fantastic. Then they showed us the boot and we thought, well, in our view, it's not really a trainer. It's not like any other trainer on the market. But what has to be understood is that Daytona don't do trendy, they don't do fashionable. In their world, this is a trainer. In our world, it's just a lovely, short, lightweight motorcycle boot. So let's talk you through the boot. The heart of every Daytona is a superior leather. Helmut and Reinhardt acknowledge that they choose a leather that's more expensive than any other leather on the market. But their view is that they're going to choose the best components to put into their boots and the price is the price. You will always find a cheaper boot than a Daytona. But if you want a Daytona, if you want to benefit from the way that they construct their boots and the components that they use in them, you just pay the price. That's just the way it is. The leather is a hydrophobically treated leather. Now that is not a treatment to the leather that's done uh, when the leather is on the bench or after the shoe is made. This is leather that is treated in the tanning. So it is given a water repellent treatment when it's being tanned. It means that the water, once the boot is made, the leather is going to repel the water. Now clearly the real waterproofing in heavy rain is going to come not from the leather itself because eventually water will soak in, but from the Gore-Tex membrane that is inside the boot. But if you've got a boot that's got hydrophobic leather that's repelling the rain, it means that the inner membrane doesn't have to work quite so hard. It means that the boot is not going to soak as much water in. It will keep your foot warmer, especially when there's heavy rain. In this particular case, because it's a lightweight, more summery kind of boot, um, they use a cast leather. They've got some perforated leather panels. They've even got some new buck here. So not constructed in the way most of Daytona's boots are, um, but all the leather is going to be a premium quality. Here you've got some extra padded panels that you don't find on, on many of their, their boots. So you've got that all around the heel area. One of the things that is a wee bit different about this boot is the way that you get in and out of it. And I think in the Frey brothers' minds, a, tra a trainer is a boot that you get in with laces. This is a laced boot. It's quite a high shaft on this boot. So one of the problems with a high shaft is that uh, having to do laces all the way up to the top can be a fiddle when you're trying to get in and out of the boot very quickly. So what this boot has is a very convenient speed lacing system. You can open it wide, really wide, get your foot in there. Then once your foot is in, you simply pull this, pull it as tight as you want, clip it tight there. You've got a lot of lace there, but you then you'll just tuck that down in the middle. So it's a very easy boot to get in and out, out of. Um, gives you a kind of lacy in their eyes a lacy trainer look, but actually it's still a boot that's as easy to get into as a zipped boot or a Velcro boot. So let's have a look at the membrane. It's got what Gore-Tex call a mid-season membrane. Goes all the way around the boot. You've got a gusset here that runs round almost to the very top of the shaft. This ribbon edging here 
is designed to catch rain. So if rain comes off, if it hits the ground, bounces up or the bottom of your trouser leg gets wet, there's a chance that rain could get into the boot. The idea of this edging here is that it will catch the rain before it can sink down into the boot. And it has to be said that one of the issues with a short boot um, is that even if you've got the very best waterproof membrane, and this boot does have the very best waterproof membrane, there is a greater propensity for water to hit the ground and come in over the top of the boot. So a Daytona short boot next to a Daytona tall boot, the short boot is going to be slightly less waterproof in extreme rain. Let's look at it in, from a protection perspective. Hardened to toe cap, same as in every Daytona boot, comes around, around the edges here, that's a very tough toe cap. But in typical Daytona fashion, they don't make it hard here because by the time you get to the gear change pad, you want a bit of softness, you want to be able to feel the gear change and change gear smoothly. So it's not really rigid all the way here. This is a boot that gives an extraordinary amount of, of feel. So here it's soft, but at the end of the toe where you really need it and around the sides, it's incredibly tough. You have a hard counter in the heel. So any kind of um, Im impact there, you're going to be protected. Both ankles, you've got hard formed protectors, but again, the way that Daytona use it or do them, they are lined with soft foam, with open cell foam. So once you're wearing the boot, you just can't feel these protectors. Comfort is very much a feature of Daytona boots. Um, most people who put these boots on, they put their, their foot in and they go, oh, that's just like a slipper. Nothing is as comfortable to wear. Clearly there are gonna be times where a Daytona boot just isn't going to fit you. You'll have a foot that, that doesn't work in a Daytona. But for most people, you put a pair of Daytonas on and they are all day comfortable from day one. The other aspect that contributes to the safety of this boot is its sole. Now, inside the boot, you'll have a standard anatomical sole that could be replaced if it wears, it wears out like in any other boot. I don't know if you can see that in there, but then there's a full plastic insole and that insole runs the length of the boot and it gives the boot a certain amount of rigidity. But embedded within that is a galvanized steel inlay that really makes the sole of this boot uh, twist proof and incredibly strong. If you come off in a boot, you really do not want a boot that's going to twist. And this boot is, is it's very difficult to twist. There's a bit of twist here around the middle, but across the the front of the foot, it's absolutely rigid. What this means, if, if you come off, it's not going to twist and break, break your foot. If something runs over your foot, the boot is not going to collapse. So it's an immensely strong boot. So that's the Daytona AC Dry. Is it a trendy boot? In truth, no, not really. Um, but it's going to be immensely comfortable. And if you want the protection of a proper motorcycle boot, but to wear in a short boot, then you, could, you should certainly look at the um, AC dries. They're expensive, but without a doubt. Um, most short boots, I think the sweet spot in the market for a short riding boot is somewhere between 150 and 200 pounds. These boots, as we record this video towards the end of 2019, this is a 320 pound boot. Um, so you will find boots that purport to do the same as this for much less money. Whether they do it as well, the leather's not gonna be as nice, it won't be hydrophobic leather, you won't have the benefit of all the Frey Brothers experience in putting a boot together, you won't necessarily get a Gore-Tex liner, all of the bits that make this boot as special as it is. But there's another reason that you spend more money on a Daytona boot than you would do on a normal boot, and that is they're just going to last. We have people who have had their Daytona boots for 15 to 20 years and are still riding in them. And one of the reasons you can do that is that Daytona, unlike any boot manufacturer that we work with, will, for the life of the boot, repair it. So if you wear the sole out, you've got holes in here and it's starting to become, um, it's starting to leak, then bring the boot in, we send them off to Germany and we must send half a dozen boots off to Germany every month. They will replace the sole. They will replace the gear change a protector. Normally they will replace the, the uh, zips, but there are no zips here, but they will replace the entire waterproof lining. I suppose there comes a point where if you're doing all of these in one go, you're reaching the cost because obviously it's, it's a chargeable facility. Um, you're reaching the cost of replacing the boot. But if it's just a sole, then often it's worth 
sending these, these boots in, getting another so sole on, going to give the boot another five, 10, 10 years life. So that's why you pay more for a Daytona boot. And whereas with most boots, I would say you're lucky if you get three, four years out of them, uh, you are going to get, provided you look after the boots, provided you nourish the leather and don't let it dry out, you're going to get 10 years out of a, out of a, a Daytona boot. You take the price of this boot, which is 320, you divide that over 10 years, 32 pounds a year, really, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Um, in our view, if you're a high mileage rider, if you want the very best, it is worth finding the extra, extra money and buying a Daytona. They're amazing boots. Um, anyway, if you'd like more information, feel free to visit the website, www, whoops, almost fell over there, www.motolegends.com. If you'd like to subscribe to our bulletins, um, you can do that on the front page of the site. The site has lots of little boxes, we call them tiles. Uh, you'll find a subscribe button there on, on the front of the site. Um, we have new products into the warehouse pretty much every day of the week. What we do when those products arrive in, we send out a bulletin either there and then or a week later. So if you want to know what's going on in the world of motorcycle apparel, please feel free to subscribe. If you prefer to get your information videographically, then we would love it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you can do below on the subscribe button. If you want to go directly to the products now to read more about the products or who knows, even buy a pair, then you can go, if you just click top right, you can go direct to the relevant page on the website. Um, anyway, this has been Chris at Moto Legends. These are the Daytona AC Dry short trainer boots. We have hope you've enjoyed our review. We will talk to you soon.